Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about liver trauma. Liver trauma. Liver trauma is the most common injury in penetrating trauma. Clinical features are you will see bruising seen on right hypochondrium. So this liver trauma grading is based on CT scan. Right. So we have six grades of liver trauma which depend on laceration and hematoma. In grade one, if the depth of the laceration is less than one centimeter and subcapsular hematoma is less than one centimeter or less than ten percent of surface area, then we call it as grade one. Then, in grade two, in grade two, if the depth of the laceration is one to three centimeters deep. or if there is subcapsular central hematoma of 1 to 3 cm in diameter or 10 to 50% of surface area then we call it as grade 2 then in grade 3 if laceration is 3 to 10 cm in depth and if there is subcapsular or central hematoma of 3 to 10 cm diameter or more than 50% of sur surface area then we call it as grade 3 then in grade 4 there is parenchymal disruption which is involving 25 to 75% of hepatic lobule is called as grade 5 grade 4 then grade 5 includes parenchymal disruption involving more than 75% of hepatic lobe is grade 5 then grade 6 is complete hepatic avulsion then the most common symptom is bleeding and the in the liver trauma again it depends upon the hemodynamic stability of the patient now if the patient is hemodynamically unstable we should directly go for surgery but if the person is hemodynamically stable then we have to do fast in if fast is positive then we should do cect and if the fast is negative we will have to do observation and in the cect if you see that the injury is grade 1 to 3 then you can observe the patient safely but along with grade 1 to 3 if you see that if there is any contrast blush then you have to do angioembolization then if the patient is hemodynamically if the patient is uh, hemodynamically unstable then we should do surgery so in the surgery uh, we will have to first in the surgery we will have to aspirate the blood and if there is any bleeding from the liver then we will have to wrap the liver with wraps to create a tamponade the main aim of doing this is to make sure that the bleeding stops now if the bleeding stops then um there are two con two conditions the bleeding can stop or the bleeding may continue if the bleeding stops then you should send the patient to icu and you should go for resuscitation if the bleeding continues then we should do pringles maneuver in this patient what is pringles maneuver pringles maneuver is this is the liver and this is the the duodenum we have hepatico duodenal ligament so we will have to compress the hepatico duodenal ligament um with a clamp this hepatico duodenal ligament will contain the portal triad so if you compress the hepatico duodenal ligament the portal triad triad will also get compressed so if the bleeding stops so here if the bleeding stops then the source of the bleeding is from hepatic artery or the portal vein because in portal triad we have two uh, vessels that is one hepatic artery and portal vein so if the bleeding stops from pringles maneuver we are sure that the bleeding is from hepatic artery or portal vein but if the bleeding continues uh, then uh, the source is is the source is from hepatic vein then you are you will be sure that the source is from hepatic that is not portal it is hepatic vein so you will have to ligate it so once you find the site of the bleeding you will repair the defect that is what you see in pringles maneuver this is hepatic vein i'm really sorry this is hepatic vein not portal vein okay now we have four piece for management one we have pri push pringle plug and plaque pack the four piece for management are push where you do manual compression 
Pringles manover has already said you can either pack the liver with the mops so as to create the tamponade effect and you can even plug the liver okay then if the if there is severe injury to portal vein we cannot ligate it completely as it is associated with 50% of mortality if there is severe injury in the hepatic artery then we can ligate it completely so these two you should remember so if there is injury in the portal vein we cannot ligate it completely if there is injury in the hepatic artery we can ligate it completely the next injury which is here important is pancreatic injury this pancreatic injury occurs in adults and children in adults the most common cause is penetrating injury in children the most common cause of pancreatic injury is blunt trauma so in adults if you see the most common organ affected in pancreatic injury is body of pancreas whereas in children uh, sorry then the blunt injury which you see in pancreatic injury occurs when the driver got stuck between the seat and the steering wheel okay that is one example in adults in children here in children the injury can occur with handle bar by while riding a cycle in the cycle the handle bar can cause injury in children in adults it can be it can occur when the driver got stuck between the seat and the steering wheel then next important points are then the most common cause of pancreatitis in children is trauma so pancreatic injury can be divided into two types one we have only pancreatic injury and second we have injury to the main pancreatic duct if there is injury to the main pancreatic duct it can be divided into whether the injury is present at head or body of pancreas or whether the injury is present at tail of pancreas so first if there is only pancreatic parenchymal injury then you can do conservative marriage manage if there is um uh, pancreatic injury to the main pan if there is injury to the main pancreatic duct at the tail then you should do distal pancreatectomy if this damage is present in head or body of pancreas then we should do the burgers procedure or duodenum preserving pancreatic head resection is done in such cases then the important procedure here one of the important procedure is burgers procedure right burgers procedure is also a surgery for chronic pancreatitis in this burgers procedure this is the duodenum and pancreas we will remove the head and body body so not head body and part of head of pancreas you have removed a part of body and also the head of the pancreas now you are going to anastomose this with jejunum so this is the jejunum so you are anastomosing the pancreas with jejunum so this is the important thing so here you are doing pancreatic jejunostomy you are doing and you are also doing duodenal jejunostomy so this is the important procedure which is burgers procedure then you have combined pancreatic and duodenal injury this we do whipple's procedure if there is combined pancreatic and duodenal injury then we do whipple's procedure then then we have one more uh, um, type which is right uh, one more important thing is so in burgers procedure we have done pancreas we have anastomosed pancreas with the jejunum so it is a type of pancreatic jejunostomy okay and you are even anastomosing the part of jejunum with jejunum so it is pancreatic jejunostomy with jejuno jejunostomy you are not touching the duodenum or any part of the uh, small intestine you should remember that next the next injury is small intestinal injury the small intestinal injury it is um, here it is also based on hemodynamic stability if the patient is hemodynamically stable then we can do 
the primary repair can be done if the patient is hemodynamically stable if the patient is hemodynamically unstable and now if the if there is proximal segment then we should put a stoma if it is distal segment then we can do clip and drop method then the next injury which is important is about the colonic injury in colonic injury if there is hemodynamic stability now if the patient is stable and less contamination is seen then we can do primary repair should be done if the patient is stable and if there is less contamination primary repair is done if the patient is unstable and more contamination then if the if there is proximal segment is involved then we should bring out has stoma 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 if the distal segment is involved then you should put a clip and drop so i will show you what a stoma is and clip and drop is now so this is the primary repair here this is the stoma which we have made and here we are just clipping the one minute here so here we are first here we are putting a clip here okay and we are putting it inside okay so that is clip and drop we are just putting a clip and just leaving it inside okay so that is clip and drop method which is done for distal segment injury then the next injury which is important here is rectal injury so in the rectal injury the most it is the most common blunt injury treatment is we can use hartmann's procedure can be used for treating the rectal injury so this is the rectum here there is an injury so you will first suture first you will give an incision in the rectum here and then you will proximal segment is brought out has a stoma whereas the distal segment is closed uh with sutures okay you are so you are giving an incision here and the proximal segment is brought out has a stoma whereas distal segment is closed with sutures so this is hartmann's procedure for rectal injury then we have retroperitoneal injury in the retroperitoneal injury we can classify the retroperitoneum into four zones first zone is the central zone which you can see here here this is the central zone which contains large vessels of our body that is aorta and vena cava this these are the lateral zones which contain the kidneys okay then this is the pelvic zone which contain bladder and this is the portal this one portal or retrohepatic zone which is the area behind the liver and it is fourth zone right now first we will learn some important points about the zone 1 zone 1 is central zone and it is here it starts from esophageal hiatus to the sacral promontory it is associated with the injuries of major branches of aorta and inferior vena cava it is of two types one we can call it has super supra mesocolic second we can call it has infra mesocolic in supra mesocolic region this mainly involves the superior aorta in supra mesocolic region we have the supra renal aorta inferior vena cava superior mesenteric vessels are present in the supra mesocolic type see we have two types in the zone a uh, central zone can be divided into two different zones again one supra mesocolic second infra mesocolic supra mesocolic are those about the superior mesenteric vessels right so these include that's no, not sorry sorry about the superior meso sorry about the mesocolon supra mesocolon supra mesocolic includes all those vessels which are present above the mesocolon so these includes supra renal aorta inferior vena cava superior mesenteric vessels and posterior Uh, sorry proximal renal vessels and proximal renal vessels then infra colic infra mesocolic uh, zone includes those vessels which are present below the mesocolon these includes inf infra renal aorta inferior vena cava and its bifurcation then treatment here is you will have to explore the exploration should be done with proximal and distal vascular control 
then zone 2 zone 2 includes the lateral zone which extends from the lateral diaphragm to the iliac crest here we find the distal renal vessels are seen here so here we see lateral whenever there is lateral hematoma in lateral zone is mostly renal origin so this is mostly treated by non operatively by embolization then stage 3 stage 3 is pelvic this is confined mainly to the retroperitoneal zone of pelvis here iliac vessels are present pelvic hematoma is usually difficult to control so because it is difficult to control it is not opened because packing and angioembolism is should be done in pelvic hematoma but we do not open it normally so as a result in this it is associated with high mortality but we do packing and angioembolism in stage 3 then we have stage 4 stage 4 we have portal or retrohepatic areas in portal or retrohepatic areas um, we in order to operate it we on retroperitoneal structures we have two maneuvers one we have cattle brash maneuver second we have maddox maneuver so in cattle brash maneuver in cattle brash maneuver right manual rotation is done in cattle brash maneuver we do first right manual rotation how is it done we will first identify the white line of talt which is an avascular plane and then cut along this line and then retract the intestine and then we can reach the inferior vena cava and the right kidney easily this will help us to oh, identify or this, this, this will help us to reach the inferior vena cava and right kidney remember it is not iota it is inferior vena cava and right kidney so this is the intestines this is the white line of talt which is seen and you will incise here once you incise here and you will retract it so once you retract it all these uh, all these bowels will be on one side and then the inferior vena cover and the kidney is mainly exposed sometimes you can see iota but the main things which can be easily exposed here are inferior vena cover and the right kidney then then we have second maneuver which is maddox maneuver even here we are going to incise on white line of talt only but that is on the left side so this is white line of talt so this is left white line of talt with along that you will incise and then you will now retract it once you retract it all these will be towards this side and you can see the structures below that is you can see the left kidney you can see the uh, left uh, left left kidney and also iota is visualized properly inferior vena cava is rarely seen but left kidney and iota are better visualized so here you are incising along the white line of talt then you will do left medial rotation is done and for visualization of iota and left kidney we do this this is mainly for the visualization of inferior vena cava and right kidney so these are the important points about the retroperitoneal hematoma thank you for watching in the next class we will learn about damage control surgery thank you